Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, uh, welcome. And if you've been here before, well, thank you for returning. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always. Uh, I welcome new subscribers to help build the community. And it's your comments and questions that really help drive a channel. Uh, the video I'm about to share is from last night. It's not a tutorial. Uh, what I'm trying to do is really just show my experience as a beginner. And, you know, so kind of like, you know, real life type stuff. Uh, as I gain additional knowledge and I get more comfortable and confident about the tools and everything that I'm using, I'll build more tutorials and uh, maybe that'll be more helpful. Um, last night, it was a clear night. Uh, so I went outside, as you know, I have a, a, a new ZWO ASI 294mm monochrome camera. I have uh, a filter wheel. Um, I've got a luminous uh, red, green, blue, and an H-alpha filter. And I recently added this uh, autofocuser. So uh, my purpose of going out last night was really to try to understand the autofocuser and can I get focus, how good is the focus, and those type of things. So what you're going to see really is from last night. Um, one thing I just kind of realized today, I just got done taking some uh, uh, flats and uh, flat darks. Um, I just did a video on the uh, Pegasus uh, Flatmaster um, that I'll have out shortly. Uh, prior to that, I was using a t-shirt, rubber band, sheets of paper, and my uh, Samsung ta uh, tablet. Uh, but in the process of doing that video, I noticed that the camera settings that I used last night were probably uh, bin one. Uh, this A, uh, the CWO ASI 294 uh, MM Pro has uh, two bin modes. Uh, my understanding was the default mode was bin two, and that should have been the larger pixel size. Uh, but in looking at uh, my setup today, when I connect the camera via uh, Nina, it shows um, that it's a smaller 2.4 pixel size. So I'm not gonna go into that uh, right now, but I do have a video called Atmospheric Seeing and Transparency. And uh, just real briefly, while matching your pixel size to your telescope optics uh, and your ability to guide um, is important. It is not the only consideration, you know, just because it's a small pixel size doesn't mean you're gonna get uh, uh, excellent resolution, atmospheric seeing, transparency, your ability to guide, many things interact uh, with the uh, detail that you're going to get and expect uh, and can expect from your images. Uh, so uh, let's get into the video and again if you have any questions or comments uh, you know please take a moment to uh, drop them down. I'm in beginning mode. Uh, I'm really open to uh, information from people, uh, feedback, help, to help me get up the learning curve uh, more quickly. And some of the things I might say in the video you're about to see about things being in focus and all that, now that I'm looking back on it, maybe they're not as much in focus. So, you know, again, I'm a beginner. I've added the complexity of a monochrome camera and filters. I've added the complexity of an autofocuser. So, you know, I'm changing a lot of variables at one time and that's okay because I'll work through it and really all I need is what everyone else needs, clear skies, and uh, then I can make some progress. So, uh, okay, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is your first time dropping into my channel, welcome. So, this will be a short video. I haven't done one in a while. Uh, you know, I don't want to whine because I know a lot of people are stuck in places where uh, they have nothing but cloudy nights. Uh, we definitely had a series here in San Mateo. Uh, this video is just sharing some of the progress that I'm making tonight. Um, as I indicated in, uh, I think, my last video, uh, I've added an uh, ZWO uh, electronic uh, autofocuser uh, to my Xenostar 61. Um, and that seems to be performing well. Uh, through Nina, although I'm not seeing the nice 
sloped curves yet, so I need to dig more into uh, autofocusing in Nina. But the images that I'm uh, producing right now, uh, the lights, uh, seem to be in focus. So, um, so that's one thing. And then uh, quickly, I got my flat master today. I'll use that tomorrow to create some flats. It'll be uh, a replacement for my Samsung tablet. Uh, but tonight, um, hopefully you see this image on the screen. I'm focused on the Rosette Nebula, uh, NGC 2244. And I'm right now doing a 300-second uh, uh, um, exposure. And I have uh, have a sequence set up to do 20. I also have uh, auto flip when it hits the meridian. Um, there might be another setting I have to uh, action in, uh, in ASCOM. I'm not sure. I'll find out. But um, I just kind of want to give you an update. Uh, the image that you see on the screen right now is using my ZWO ASI 294mm Pro monochrome camera with a ZWO um, H alpha filter. I think it's uh, 7 nanometers. Um, so, you know, things seem to be progressing well. Um, over here, uh, I'm guiding with PhD2 and I'm looking down in this area here for what my error is, RMS error in RA is uh, 0.3 and declination is 0.26 for a total error of 0.39 it's my understanding uh, that's uh, not bad again I'm a beginner and I'm just starting to put all the various pieces together so I'll learn a lot uh, in uh, in the process and then just briefly here uh, this is carts to seal that's what I use for the planetarium software it's not real pretty like Stellarium uh, I happen to have Stellarium up over here on my right which you can't see because I'm tracking the Rosette uh, Nebula relative to the uh, uh, Meridian the prime Meridian so uh, again if everything goes right Nina should stop uh, the sequence uh, five minutes before the Rosette Nebula reaches the uh, the meridian and then execute a flip and as part of the flip I've asked it to do an autofocus so um, I must say the autofocus capability is pretty cool um, when I got set up tonight and took my first image clearly it was out of focus um, and it ran a series of exposures and again while the graph is not what I uh, expected to see based upon other threads and uh, in forums and those type of things uh, the resulting image does look like it is in focus so I probably have got some uh, new work to do there um, the other thing here in Nina um, when I look at statistics I I think that I am probably underexposed a bit. Um, this spike here, I understand, represents kind of the view of the uh, histogram that you would normally see, and I would like it a little bit further to the right, but I'm already at 300 seconds. Uh, I could go longer, of course, um, but uh, for these initial set of images, I'm hoping, uh, you know, kind of keep them uh, 300 seconds and um, see what I wind up with. And again, you know, there's that old, it's not necessarily a debate, but, you know, are more shorter exposures better than longer exposures? And the longer you expose for, the better your guiding needs to be. So uh, I'm comfortable here right now where I'm at, but, you know, I'm a beginner, so I'm going to, I'm going to learn um, through the process. And then this other tab down here is, um, is imaging, if I want to take an individual uh, image. Um, and then here's the view of the images. Here is my graph for autofocus. 
Uh, we're in an autofocus with the H alpha filter. Uh, I don't know how to interpret that, but I kind of expected it to be kind of a, um, you know, an even slope down and then, um, you know, a similar slope up on the other side, but, uh, but I'll learn. Um, plate solving, uh, it seems to be plate solving okay. Uh, I have uh, Plate Solve 2 as the plate solver here in Nina, so that seems to be working well. And then um, maybe we'll go up uh, to, uh, there's the guider view, uh, the camera. Uh, this view over here, uh, I believe I'm uh, cooling the camera to... Uh, minus 10 degrees. That may not be the optimal cooling level uh, to get the maximum uh, reduction in noise, but again, I'll find out over time. Uh, I still have many questions around what temperature I should set the camera at, um, but again, that's just all part of the of the learning curve. Um, other than that, uh, that's just kind of what uh, what is going on. Uh, here's the sequence window where I set the sequence up. I just have one, uh, again, uh, set up for right now. Uh, once I get past the, the meridian, then I'll, I can uh, image for a while longer uh, this evening before the Rosette Nebula uh, winds up behind a tree. So uh, that's where I'll have to stop. So let's go back into the imaging section. Oh, and for the meridian flip, uh, I went into the uh, options view and then I enabled auto meridian flip. Um, I've asked it to wait five minutes after it pass, uh, Rosette passes the, uh, the meridian and then um, recenter after the flip. I don't know if I'm supposed to use telescope side up here on or off. We'll find out. And then there's a uh, I'm allowing time in seconds for the scope uh, to settle and then wait five minutes and wait until the Rosette Nebula, as I understand it, is five minutes past the meridian and then do an autofocus on the uh, uh, once uh, the flip has happened. And so what I'm expecting to have happen since I have this, I'm only on five of 20, I'm going to hit the meridian. It's going to pause the uh, imaging sequence. It's going to do the flip, or it's not going to do it, uh, but if it does it, uh, then it'll do the autofocus and all that, and then it'll restart the sequence. That's my um, expectation. So, um, just wanted to give you a, um <clears throat> update. Uh, my goal now is to start collecting data. Uh, as I have clear nights. I'm also heading down into a board of four uh, zone down in uh, uh, the Palm Springs area. Uh, I'm going to head down to uh, Sky Valley area down. It's kind of down by Indio and Yucca Valley down that way. So it'll be interesting to see some uh, what class four Bortle skies are. I haven't seen those in a while. And um, uh, taking everything with me and um, will go in the RV, I'll have power. I really need to work on a solution to power uh, all the equipment I have now in the field, but I'll work on that in future, uh, in, you know, in future days. Okay, <clears throat> so again, I just wanted to give you an update um, of where I'm at. Um, I will spend some time tomorrow processing the data that I collect tonight. I don't think I'll be anywhere near the amount of integration time that I'll need, but again, it's good practice for me to take the data that I have and run it through uh, Astro Pixel Processor, and then you know how it works. Um, I'll save this data set, and then on subsequent nights, I'll continue to uh, uh, image this target, and then I'll bring in some of the uh, uh, other filters into the mix. Uh, right now, I don't have my... Um, oxygen 3 or sodium 2 filter so maybe I'll try the uh, RGB filters on the rosette um, and see what uh, results I get there so uh, again if you like this kind of content please give me a thumbs up 
As always, I welcome new subscribers, and what really drives the channel are your comments and questions. Um, got a great recommendation uh, from a person that was dropped into the channel about K-Stars. Um, while I'm using Nina, there are so many, or there are many options that you can use uh, for your imaging and control automation software. Uh, so maybe you should check out uh, K-Stars. Um, and I think it's always good to know what's out there and then make the decision on what uh, best fits your needs. So um, I think that's going to be about it for now. Uh, we're making some progress. And uh, as I'm uh, progressing, I'll start to produce some additional uh, videos uh, and show the different operations uh, that I do at night as part of my workflow. I'm still sorting out what my workflow needs to be, um, but I'll get there. And uh, thanks again for uh, dropping into the channel. Until next time.